Hi, Kiss Kit community. My name is Olivia. And I'm Abby. And today we want to welcome you to a new series that we're going to be hosting here on the Kiss Kit YouTube channel, where we have some conversations with some of the most interesting members of IBM Quantum. Today we're going to be sitting down with Katie Pizzolato, a VP of IBM Quantum, talking about all the things we are excited about happening in Quantum in 2024. So let's get into it. Yeah, hope you enjoy. Welcome, Katie. Uh, thank you so much for coming down and chatting with us for a little bit. So I guess my first question is, you know, there was a lot going on in the community and in quantum computing in general in 2023. Um, what are we going to see in 2024? What are we excited about? I think we're going to see a ton of system use. I think we're going to see quantum computing being used as a tool for scientific discovery. And I'm really excited about it. We saw a lot at the end of last year. Um, you know, we're the, our utility paper out in June. We saw a, a great response from the community on more papers at scale. Um, people really using the system to see what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. um, we're at we're at a scale and a quality that you can really start pushing this device. And I think we're going to see some super cool things out of it. That's awesome. Anything? Obviously, you can't tell us any kind of like secret um, research things that are that are happening. You know here at, at IBM, but is there, can you give us a teaser of things you think we're going to start seeing more in the, the research world in, in quantum in general? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to, I, I can use what something that Olivia had said earlier is um, finding, putting the pieces together. You know, I think there's, there's groups that are looking at algorithms, there's groups that are looking at capabilities, there's groups that are looking at parts of the parts of the software to make transpiler and things like that better. Yeah. I think we're going to start to see those puzzle pieces coming together. Um, we're looking at how classical, obviously, how HPC and class, you know, HPC computing can be used to extend um, and be very much partners with the quantum device. I think that is going to really allow us to push the limits of the quantum device. Yeah, that's something that I'm really looking forward to because I feel like a lot of the narrative up till now has been very focused on like you know pitting like quantum and classical methods like against each other. Mm -hmm. But this new kind of like. Uh, you know, almost integration with HPCs and, um, you know, quantum serverless architectures and stuff like that. Like, it seems like we're kind of, we're moving past that a little bit and starting to open ourselves up more to using classical with quantum, yes. you know, yeah. for a shared goal. <laughs> and yes. I really like that too, because I think for a long time, it's been confusing to people mm. about quantum versus classical, when mm -hmm. really it's when quantum. When am I going to have a quantum computer on my iPhone, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but really it's both of them together. That is what we are, that's what we care about. Yes. So I think that, I agree. I think that that's very exciting. One thing I want to just spend a little bit of time talking about is our new fleet. So, I mean, just a few years ago, for me anyway, the idea of running anything on 100 qubits was not fathomable. And now IBM just launched our whole fleet of 100 qubit processors. That sounds very incredible to me. Why is this so exciting? Yeah, well, I think we, we've we seen for a long time, and there was a paper that came out last year that did kind of a, a survey of, I think it was 750 roughly papers, and mm -hmm. somebody flashed the archive if they have it, uh, on kind of the landscape of quantum computing. How many qubits are people using to do things? Yeah. And it was really low numbers, something that I think we have in some of our talks that could have been simulated with like a PC from 1981. Yeah. Um, and we know that if it can be simulated efficiently, it, there's not going to be a quantum advantage. So we really need to push out of those, you know, kind of easy classically simulated places and get into kind of out of that brute force regime and look at where we can start pushing where we think quantum is going to have advantage. Um, and we've got to lay the groundwork for that. Uh, we, we need to find things that quantum can do that are that are hard, you know, that are harder than class. We need to find things that are hard and we need to find things to do with those things. Yep. And so finding, having systems that can allow us to push into these heavier qubit counts, longer gate depths. A lot of what we've been talking about with our fleet is being able to increase the gate depths and in our roadmap going forward as well. Um, but we've got to start pushing those circuit instances in order to find the advantage that we all, you know, believe so deeply this technology is going to deliver. It's a huge challenge, you know, we're pushing to get forward together as a community, you know, running a bell state on a quantum computer, it's not it's not it anymore, you know. That was that was great for that like right. that was exciting phase. in that was so 2017. <laughs> Well, well, kind of, yeah, you know, like now we have hundreds of qubit fleets available, yeah. you know, we can push the boat out so much more than yes. before and start, 
you know, really kind of doing actually useful things with these devices, which yes. I think is very exciting. Exactly. And and the more we use them, the more we will find things to do with them. And the more we will use them, we will, we will find um, ways around the obstacles. And IBM just launched, uh, didn't we, uh, a brand new processor at the end of last year, Heron, mm -hmm. yes. right? What is so special about this new processor yes. for people like me that aren't very hardware savvy? <laughs> yeah, so Heron is our, where we really believe is laying the groundwork to show that we have the quality that we need to to get to these longer circuit depths and, and push us into the other part of the roadmap. So I think gate errors are about half of what Eagle was. Um, crosstalk is essentially eliminated, and the gate times are about a fifth of what Eagle was. So that's allowing us to do to to do more faster, and that is also uh, what we need all of our users to do is more uh, more things to see you know really push the bounds of this technology. Yep. Let's talk about software. Of all the things we mentioned, there's so many things coming down the pipeline. One thing that I feel like we have to address, or I my nerdy software developer self wants Abby to wants address. to talk about it. <laughs> um, the AI transpilation service. It's still obviously in a very experimental phase at the moment. And I think our premium users um, you know, actually have access to go and experiment with this new service, which I think is fantastic. But it looks like preliminary data is telling us that using these AI transpilation passes does uh, often give you better results than if you were to just kind of heuristically run the transpilation passes yourself. So me personally, that's something that I'm very excited to see develop more throughout the course of this year. Yeah, I would completely agree. I think the transpilation service, Kiskit 1.0, which we're going to hear much more about coming up, it's going to be more stable, more performant, it's going to be leaner. This is going to be the year of software. And again, it kind of like comes back to this idea of, you know, merging quantum technology with already existing classical technologies yes. out there. There's also, I think, a lot happening with kind of HPC integration as well yes. coming down the pipeline. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I th again, yes, from a capability perspective, I think something we're also going to see much more and more of is the partnership between HPC and quantum in order to extend what both of the technologies can deliver together, like they're better together. And I think we'll continue to see that. So you mentioned something that I want to come back to, actually, Abby. Um, the docs. Woo! Documentation. We have new docs, <laughs> yes. right? For Kiskit. Um, yes. uh, both of you can tell me why is this so important? Because I'm not a software person. Well, I think you know we we've consolidated the platform in a lot of ways. We've we've really simplified the experience coming in. Um, I think we're also focusing a lot on the new capabilities and what we want what we want people to focus on um, within the documentation, the new capabilities, how do you use it? Um, what, you know, what is it important for? A lot of more tutorials and things like that. I think um, kind of holistically, the entire end-to-end -end documentation and education experience um, is pretty incredible. Let's talk about that. The IBM quantum learning platform, I think was maybe an announcement that flew under the radar a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we have an entirely new learning platform an education page full of courses and the documentation is part of it. Um, what do you hope people will do with this new page? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the content out there is really incredible. I think John Watrous is an unsung hero, as well as you know those those on the team that have helped really put that whole uh, piece together. Like even my kids, you know, watch that. <laughs> Your kids know uh, who John is. Yes, you know, I I think he is an incredible <laughs> educator. I think his series is not to be missed. Um, I think anybody and everybody out there who is interested in quantum computing, it is absolutely worth your time, as well as a lot of the other tutorials that we have out there. They're really showing like this is how you use the system. And mm -hmm. it's a bit of what we talked about earlier about the transition that we've seen and the the evolution of of the the community and industry is we're really focusing on use. You know, this is what it is, this is how you use it, this is how you can derive value out of it. Um, and I think end to end, the education and documentation um, on the platform is really great. That makes me feel good. Thank you. You know, I think the software ha has come is coming up to a place, and the documentation and tutorials and education is coming to a place where I think we've narrowed that barrier to entry for how you approach the technology and how you approach the platform. Uh, and back to what are we so excited about in 2024? That's what I'm so excited about. Is I think I think we're going to see um, a lot of a lot of new users, a lot of new ideas, and all coming together with the platform. And it's not just you know rehashing the the same old bell state tutorial you know yeah, that we, right. which has gotten us pretty far and gotten our community pretty far i think we've got 
so many new things that have just been launched and are, are still in the process of being developed. And I feel like that really hit home for me, too, because as much as, you know, the Bell State is beloved by all, <laughs> it's kind of been there, done that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't need to run a Bell State, at least on, a, you know, a two-qubit example, on 100-qubit yes. processors. Right. <laughs> it's not a great use of <laughs> their time. And to be respectful to the processors, you know, <laughs> I think it makes sense that a lot of our new tutorials are really for the 100 qubit scale. Mm -hmm. Because running an experiment and circuits on that level is different than it was on our smaller processors. Yep. So sort of wrap it up here. Uh, I have one fun question for you, and you can answer too, Abby, if you want. Um, If you were going to school, you know, in in 2024, and say you're starting graduate school, and you want to study quantum computing in, in the future, what research topics would you want to go back and study at this point in time? Hmm. Algorithms. Algorithms. Okay. Error correction. Okay. Um, I mean, I think also into, you know, capabilities, error mitigation, um, error mitigation and error correction. We think they're going to be partners in the future. Like uh, anything to do with using the system or building the system in a practical way. Um, I think that we have we've just come to a point now where so much of of what you know we're obviously focusing on t- internally um, with a lot of our you know if we think about some of our, our new papers that came out is really about just practical use of this practical build and use of the system. Mm-hmm. Um, so anything in those areas I think are definitely going to be hot topics uh, for the future. Um, we're going to rapidly get into a more expanded application space. If you you know look at our roadmap and look at the step function and everything that we'll have between now and 2023. Um, so using the system practically, building the system practically, um, and applying it. Do you mean 2033? Sorry, 33. Okay. 33. <laughs> Abby, what are uh, you studying? If I mean, Abby my answer is always school. gonna be the same and just like fundamental programming skills, I think <laughs> is just like the foundational core and then, you know, to launch you into being able to do all the no, things. No, but that's that a really talking. important point, right? We, we talk a lot about workforce development. We talk about, um, you know, how are people gonna, and when we talk about the people, I don't, there's not going to be kind of a classical programmer and a quantum programmer, right? right. It's gonna be an evolution of those skills. It's gonna be complementary skills. We've talked also about, you know, classical and quantum coming together. Um, anything in that kind of computer science, math, software space is going to rapid um, evolution there as well. What about you, Olivia? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> if I was still doing quantum computing, is the question, right? Okay. Um, I think I'm interested in the, the novel gate architectures mm-hmm. that we're implementing in the Heron and the large, the large bird processors. I think if I could go back to graduate school, I mean, I'm an experimentalist, so, <laughs> and I don't want to program stuff, um, <laughs> you know, more than I have to. So I think if I could go back and like build new gate architectures, that's what I would want to do. Yeah. Nice. All right, well. Oh, starting over, though, sounds terrible. I know, but to, clar- <laughs> to clarify, I don't want to do another PhD. <laughs> um, but if I could do a PhD in, like, maybe a few months and just, like, a sabbatical. You but, go. you know, to study something different. That's what I would focus on. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Katie. We really yeah, appreciate thanks. your fun. time. We just wanted to basically, you know, kick off the year with some things we're looking forward to, a few teasers of some special announcements that we have coming down the road. I'm super hyped. This conversation <laughs> has got me jazzed for 2020. Yes. I know. <laughs> I'm excited, too. All right. Well, thank you again so much. Thanks. Well, I think that was a really, really great conversation with Katie. I always learn so much when she comes down to the studio. And we'll definitely make sure to add the links to the new learning platform and the docs page. Katie's team and Abby have put a ton of work into those, so definitely make sure you check those out. Yeah, it was a really great uh, conversation. Uh, What can people expect from the rest of the series? Yeah, so we're gonna hopefully be using this space to give some updates about upcoming events, and we're also going to be using this space to give some product updates as well. Yeah, so the next episode, next month, we're going to be talking about the KISSKit 1.0 launch, so make sure you subscribe and tune in for that episode. And mostly, we really want to hear from you folks. What do you want to see out of this series? Who do you want us to get to come to the studio to talk to us? What kind of topics should we cover? Um, Leave us a comment uh, below. And other than that, um, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.